so good to see everybody today. So good to see everybody today. On a happy New Year Thursday. Happy New Year Thursday. The first Thursday in 2021. Amen. Well, give me, uh, after yesterday, after yesterday, everybody give me a, whoo, what was that? Everybody give me a, whoo, what was that? Yesterday, yesterday, get, can, I, can I get a, whoo, get, everybody give me a, whoo, what was that? Yesterday in Washington D.C., what we saw, what we saw yesterday, hey, faith walking, what we saw yesterday was a manifestation of spiritual warfare on Earth. What we saw yesterday in Washington D.C. was spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare came to Earth. That's what we saw yesterday. Was the devil trying to interrupt everybody's peace? The devil came forth to interrupt everybody's peace. And what was so amazing? What was so amazing? We just talked about it. We just talked about it on Tuesday. Talk about prophetic. We just talked about demonic logic on Tuesday. Remember that the lesson on Tuesday was demonic logic, and yesterday it manifested. Yesterday was a manifestation of demonic logic. Demonic logic in action. And that's why we just got. That's why we just got interrupted. Notice, I'm I'm about, I'm about to break down. I'm about to explain spiritually what happened yesterday. The devil was busy and demonic logic was all through the day. Demonic logic was working overtime yesterday. And it shows you how important it is to stay connected. One one lady killed four, four killed total. There are four killed, four people killed to, in, in, in all, four people. One lady was killed, we know about, but there's four total. So, so what we saw yesterday. It was almost like, what? What? What is this? But remember, remember, the Bible says, the Bible says things are going to get worse in the end times. The Bible already tells us things are going to get worse during the end times. As we as we get closer and closer to end times, we know things will be crazy. The, the word says things like never before. The pandemic, the pandemic is worse than ever before. That's, that crazy stuff yesterday was like never before. The racism has risen its head again, like like years ago, like decades ago. The devil, the devil is busy, cause he knows he knows his time is getting near. The end times, yes, the end times is coming. But guess what? His time is near to be thrown into the lake of fire. So that's why we have to stay focused to hold our peace. That's why we have to hold our peace. Yesterday was a perfect example of why you have to hold your peace. Hold your peace. Now, even though now I want to I want the today's lesson, today's lesson is demonic logic in action. Today's lesson is demonic logic in action. Today, in today's time, in today's time, not yesterday, demonic logic in action. Part two, because we got interrupted. Part one was just praising worship. The devil tried to interrupt us. See, the devil knows what I'm about to say. So the devil tried to interrupt us so you wouldn't hear today's lesson to explain spiritually what happened yesterday is all in the Bible. Everything that happened yesterday is talked about in the Bible. All the different spirits came forth. All the different spirits that manifested yesterday, which we saw on television. Now, first of all, <clears throat> first of all, before we get into the lesson, before we get into the lesson, let's just first talk about what the Bible says about things that are coming. Now, let me let, let me let you understand how close we're getting to end times. Now, don't go into panic mode because those of us who know the Lord, we're not panicking. Those of us who are saved, there is no panic because whenever it comes, whenever Jesus comes, whenever the rapture comes, Whenever end times comes, we know exactly where we're going. So if you know where you're going, there is no fear. Because when it's your time to go, we're going to be with the Lord, praising for the, forever. So first of all, have no fear about anything going on. Because whenever it's our time to go, we, go, we know exactly where we are. That's why it's so important to be ready to already receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, first of all, let me just, before I give you, before I give you the lesson, Turn to turn to Matthew twenty four, turn to Matthew twenty four. Matthew twenty four. I'm looking at verse fourteen. Matthew twenty four. 
24 14. 24 14. Now, 24 14 says, they're talking about the end times. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. This testimony, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, let, wait a minute. Now, let's look at this. More people, more people in the world have computers than have television. So the word is being spread around the world by internet. See, the devil tried to add, add all this chaos on the internet, but internet is reaching parts of the world that could never be reached. So right now, the gospel is being spread to all parts of the world because more people have computers than have televisions. Which means if you're reaching if you're reaching the masses by internet, you're reaching places that would never know about the word of God. So even though we have missions going out physically, the internet is the number one mission field because we're reaching people around the world. This channel alone, this channel alone by analytics, we have 30 countries watching this channel. I don't know how many countries are watching Golden Nuggets, but the channel has 30 countries watching this channel. In parts of the world, parts of the world that tell you, I can't say praise God out loud because I'll be killed. I got people from Pakistan, uh, India, China. Uh, uh, we got Rizia in India. I got people in parts of the country who tell me they can't praise God because if they hear them say praise God, they will be killed. So that lets me know, that lets me know this channel is reaching countries where you can't say praise God. You can't say, you might not even know about God. So the gospel is being preached by all the ways God is being spread on the internet. Around the world is learning about the word of God. This gospel shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. What is the end? The tribulation is getting ready to start. So yesterday, yesterday was just a manifestation of what's going to happen in the future. Yesterday was a preview. But see, with those who are raptured up, we get to miss some of that craziness. But yesterday was a manifestation of what the end times is going to be like every day. The great tribulation is going to be like that yesterday, all day, everywhere, everywhere is going to be like that. We just saw one city. Imagine yesterday being everywhere. Can you imagine that? Yesterday craziness is the entire world every day in the great tribulation. So it, yesterday was like a like a dress rehearsal. <laughs> so so what we the reason I'm doing this lesson is I'm not I'm not talking about just politics. See, yesterday happened, and I'm addressing it from I'm addressing it from the spiritual side. I'm not just doing I'm not just doing a editorial. I'm not talking about the political side. I'm talking about what happened spiritually yesterday. Spiritual unrest. Spiritual unrest was what we watched yesterday. Spiritual unrest turns into physical unrest. Spiritual unrest turns to physical unrest. So we understand when God said, I'm going to save you before the hour of testing. The hour of testing is the Antichrist telling you, follow me or die. If for those who aren't raptured, remember Revelation says, will be saved from the hour of testing. The hour of testing in Revelation 3.20, the Lord says, I'll save, I'll spare you from the hour of testing. The hour of testing is when the Antichrist tells you, will you follow me or die? That's the, that's the test. The Antichrist will then be here. All the chaos, acting like he's Jesus, working signs and wonders. And then he'll ask everyone, will you follow me or die? If you follow him, you get 666 on your head or your wrist. If you follow him, if you don't follow him, you die. But guess what? If you die, you're with the Lord. So if you miss the rapture, if you miss the rapture and you finally get it together and you turn the Antichrist down, you still end up with the Lord. Praise God. See, God give, God give you a second chance for those that don't believe now. And the rapture happens, and then all of a sudden they go, I should have believed, I should have believed, but you didn't believe. But now they believe, but they missed the boat. 
They missed the boat because the rapture already happened, and now they want to bleed. But you can't give, you can't be <laughs> retroactive. <laughs> there is no such thing as retroactive rapture. No, you missed it. But now you got a second chance. But now you also got to go through all the tribulation, all the chaos in the world, the wrath of God, all the stuff you got to go through to and then live to have that the Antichrist ask you, follow me or die, and then you end up with the Lord. So you still got a second chance, praise God. You're martyred for God, that's right. You're martyred for the Lord. Hey man, Pablo, Pablo, welcome. So I just, I just want to start the lesson to let you understand what yesterday was all about spiritually. So we're not getting into, like, like I said, we're not going to talk about politics. I'm giving you the different ways Demonic, lo demonic logic was in action. We Tuesday, I gave you the definition of demonic logic. Demonic logic is any time the devil tries to make you think anything ungodly is justified. To make you feel like everything yesterday was okay. To make you think yesterday was justified. That's demonic logic. To make you think chaos is logical. God is not a God of chaos. God is not a God of confusion. But of what? peace so yesterday was not god that's the first thing the first thing is first text the first text today uh first corinthians 14 14 33 first corinthians 14 33 first corinthians 14 33 god is not a god of confusion but of peace so when you see confusion that's not god when you see hatred violence that's not God. You see panic. That's not God. That's the world. That's the world. God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And that's how you know. The, the other thing we saw yesterday, uh, to, uh, second text, second text, first John. We know this is first John. First John 215, 15 to 17. 1 John 2.15 to 17. 2.15 to 17. 1 John 2.15 to 17. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, this was yesterday. Verse, verse 16 was yesterday. For the for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. All that stuff yesterday was people reacting physically to the world. Nobody had peace. There was no peace. You can't hold your peace if you're in violence. You can't hold your peace in hatred. You can't hold your peace while you're shooting somebody. You can't hold your peace when, you, when you're not doing anything to hold your peace like God or show love. That's God. And all the stuff yesterday was not of God. And the boastful pride of life, the boastful pride of life was people acting physically to, to get to get their earthly fleshly desires of anger and hatred and violence to let that out to give totally into the world the world is chaos God is peace the world is chaos so when you see chaos that means everybody involved in chaos has given in to the world and what you saw yesterday is what happens when you give 100 percent to the world when you give 100% to the world yesterday was an example of giving your life to the world and you saw total mayhem it didn't even make sense and then the meeting the meeting they tried to disturb went on and got completed at 3 a.m. this morning eastern time they finished the meeting they tried to interrupt the meeting thinking something going to stop something demonic logic demonic logic makes it make sense to do these things now the first thing I got 10 things, uh, uh, John, John and Deanne, I got, I got 10 things. The, as I was watching yesterday, the Holy Spirit gave me the entire lesson as I saw yesterday unfold. The Holy Spirit gave me the entire lesson, today's lesson, as I was watching it. Because we've seen demonic logic. Tuesday, we talked about it. 
Tuesday, we talked about it. Adam and Eve, the serpent deceiving deceiving Eve. We, we talked about all the ways of deception, how the devil tried to fool me that make me, make me think it was the wrong day. That's a simple version. Today, we're talking about what happened yesterday, how busy things were. <laughs> now, first thing, the first thing, number one, number one, deception. The spirit of deception, number one, 10 traits of demonic logic, 10 traits that we saw yesterday. Forget about the rest of today. We're talking about what we saw yesterday, active today. And the number one, deception. Deception. That we're in, we're in Mark 24. Turn to Mark 24, 4. Mark 24, 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew, sorry. Matthew, Matthew, I'm sorry. Matthew 24. Go back to where we were. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. Verse 4 says, And Jesus answered and said, See to it that no one misleads you. See to it that no one misleads you. What happened yesterday? What happened yesterday? The president said, we are going to march. I'll even be there. He said, we are going to march. I'll even be there with you. And everybody got excited. I'm going to be marching. I'm going to be marching with him. Everybody got, everybody got deceived. Because he, the president said, I will be there with you to march. He wasn't there with them. They all went and busted into the, into the building. He's watching on television. And everybody in that building is going to prison. They said it last night. They got cameras. They've got cameras all over the place. And the cameras all over the place. When the cameras are all over the place, you understand that they're going to see everybody. They, they're going to see everybody who busted in illegally. And everybody's going to go to jail. And yet, where was the deception? The president was watching everything on TV. He wasn't with them. But they thought, they thought he was going to be there. And so they thought, how can we be in trouble? How can we get in trouble if we're following him? Deception. The deception and lies go together. The reason I say deception first is deception is acting out the lie. Deception is acting out the lie. Now I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, I'll give you lies later. But right now we're talking about deception. That was deception. Because everybody got excited because they thought they were going to be with the president to march. And he wasn't there. And they acted crazy. The devil came in because when there's confusion, when there's confusion, the devil will always be there. The devil is always going to be in confusion. That's what he does. He is the author of confusion. Where there's confusion, the devil is going to be in the middle of it. And you see yesterday happen. Because when there's confusion, the devil's in right there to lead the way. And the devil is who led the way yesterday. They thought it was the president. No, the devil led the way yesterday. The president, was, he was watching on TV. So what led everybody to act crazy? The spirit of heaviness came over him and the devil came to steal, kill, destroy. And what you see yesterday? Steal. Somebody got shot. Four people dead. Kill. Kill. Stealing stuff from the, stealing stuff from the, stealing from the White House. Two. Four people killed. Steal, kill, destroy, and destroyed everything they could. You actually saw it. Steal, kill, destroy was actually going on yesterday. You don't even, you, you, you don't even need a Bible. You just look at yesterday and you actually saw steal, kill, destroy in one day on television. People don't understand. That was a Bible study yesterday. That's why the Holy Spirit tell me, go through the lesson. Go through, go through yesterday. Go through yesterday and let them understand what it is. Amen, Myrna. Amen, Myrna. Myrna, no long comments till at the end. Amen. No long comments until the end. Amen. Okay. So deception was for number one. Number one was deception. Number two. Number two. Smooth speech. Number two. Smooth speech. That's also what got people worked up. Because when you're listening to someone who speaks eloquently 
and they make it sound so good. You get fired up because because they make it sound so good what they need to do. Smooth speech got everybody excited. And turn uh, the scripture turned to turn to uh, Romans, Romans 16, 18. Romans 16, 18. Romans 16, 18. Sixteen, eighteen. For such men, for such men, are slaves, not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetite, and by their smooth speech, by their smooth speech and flattering speech, they will deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. Let's look at that. Look at that. Look at look at verse eighteen. For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of unexpecting. And those who listen, all of his followers, they were just open to whatever he said. And the smooth speech got everybody up, all excited, everybody upside down. Deception and smooth speech. Now, the third punch, the third punch they worked with that. You got deception, smooth speech. Number two, I mean, that, number, number two. Number three. Number three, tickling the ears. Number three, tickling the ears. Now, the Bible says tickling the ears. What tickling the ears mean? Number three, tickling the ears. That means you're telling people what they want to hear. You're telling people what they want to hear. When you tickle somebody's ears, you're telling them what they want to hear. And you're, you're really manipulating. We'll get to manip manipulation this last. Tickling the ears means you're telling people what they want to hear in order to get them to do what you want to do. See, that's why it's really manipulation. Manipulation is using everything. Manipulation is last because manipulation uses everything we're talking about. But right now, we're talking about tickling the ears. That's, uh, look at uh, 2 Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 4.3. Amen, Alan. 2 Timothy 4.3. Seduction, that's right, Jana. 2 Timothy 4.3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in according to their own desires. They'll accumulate for themselves teachers of their own desires. Now, now, even though the word right now, the word is talking about those who are antichrist spirits, where you'll find false teachers, and the antichrist spirits will teach the word the way you want to hear it. People don't want to hear about the end times. People don't want to hear about the lake of fire, but the person, the false prophet, will make it sound so good, and people, their ears will be tickled. Don't worry about the end times, like the devil said, like the devil said to Eve. Don't worry about it. You won't die. No, you won't die. I'm, I'm tickling. The devil was tickling Eve's ear. No, you won't die. If you eat the forbidden fruit, if you eat the forbidden fruit, you'll know more things like God and the good of evil. That's tickling her ears to make her think it's okay. No, bite the bite the fruit. It's okay. Yesterday, it's okay. The, the, the prince is gonna be with you. It's okay. If there's any trouble, I'm gonna be with you. I'll be marching with you. So there will be no fear of chaos if you think you're if you're following the person you're following. So the tickling of the ears took place in the rally before to get people fired up, to let them know, yeah, we're going to march, we're going to take things back, we're going to change things, we're going to do everything, we're going to take it back tomorrow, we're going to do everything, and nothing happened but violence, steal, kill, destroy, all caused by tickling the pee, tickling the ears, smooth speech. It's got everybody worked up into what you saw yesterday. And of course, number four, Number four, lying. <laughs> Number four, lying. Now, I, I said four and one are connected. 
deception and lying are are they're they're like they're like twins. Deception and lying are twins. You speak lies, and when you act when you act out the lie, that's deception. So what what was first saying? I'll be there. I'll be there with you marching. That's the lie. That's the lie. I'll be there with you marching. So everybody got excited. Everybody got excited because I'll be with you. But he wasn't there with him. So when the when he deception came, he wasn't there. That's deception. The, the lying is saying, I'll be there to march with you. Deception was, no, I won't. <laughs> but you don't know that. See, that's why lying, lying and deception work together. Amen, John, a setup. I just tickled your ears. I gave you my smooth speech to let you know what I'm going to do. I'll be there. Don't worry. I'll be there with you. And I wasn't there. Deception. You went, you went and did an act of violence, act of, 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 of insurrection. And go, most people, a lot of those people will end up in prison because they thought they would be okay because they were fired up and thought it was going to be okay. Demonic logic. They thought it was going to be okay to do crimes, to kill people, to invade the Capitol building, to, to invade, invade security. Demonic logic. It's okay. You, you're not going to get in trouble. It's okay. You'll be with the president. You're not going to be in trouble. Demonic logic. Justifying. Justifying bad behavior. That's what demonic logic is. The devil is busy. Number five. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, John. John, the scripture, the scripture for number four, John eight forty four. We read it Tuesday. Turn to John eight forty four. John eight forty four. Eight forty four. Eight forty four reads: You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do. The desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, it speaks from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. That's what it was. The devil is the father of lies. That's why when you don't understand that you're not, if you're not connected, if you're not connected, the devil comes in and does all the talking. If you're not connected to the Holy Spirit, the devil is the one talking, not, 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 not the Holy Spirit. The devil is the one talking when you're not connected. You hear voices. Yeah, you hear voices. The Holy Spirit is talking and the devil talking. If you're connected, you know which one's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is peace. The devil, the devil, we gotta do something about that. We gotta kill people. We gotta rush people. We we gotta act on this. We gotta do something right now. We gotta take over. We gotta physically do something. And the devil's saying, come on, steal, kill, destroy. Steal, kill, destroy. Why? Because you're not connected. There is no peace. There is no Holy Spirit. You connected to the devil. If you have no God in your life, you're connected to the devil. If there's no Holy Spirit in your life, you're connected to the devil. And he's gonna steal, kill, destroy. Come on, let's do something. Do something. Let's do something. And yesterday they did something. Because if you don't have God in your life, if you don't have God in your life, you're, you're connected 100% to the devil. And he's telling you everything to do. He's telling you what to say. And see, the reason it started for the president down is because the devil brings confusion in when you lose your peace. When you lose your peace of mind. When you lose your peace of mind, here comes the devil. When you lose your peace of mind, here comes the devil. When the president lost the election, he lost his peace of mind. He lost his peace of mind because he didn't agree with the election. When the president didn't agree with the election, he lost his peace of mind. And now, here comes, we can't do that. It wasn't right. 
We got to do something about that. Now, this is the devil attacked the president first. He's speaking through him. No, you got to do something about this. You got to do something. You got to create something. You got to do whatever you can. This is not right. You got to do whatever you can. You got to do something. You got to do something. And he did something. He spoke to his followers. And now the same voice went through his mouth to the people who are following. We got to do something. We got to do something right now. We got to do whatever it is. We got to march. We got to tear things up. We got to show them who's boss. Till steal, kill, destroy. Show them who boss. Show them who's boss. Steal, kill, destroy. Show them who's boss. Steal, kill, destroy. There is no Holy Spirit. Steal, kill, destroy. And what you see yesterday, kill, steal, destroy. But it all started because there was no peace. When the prince lost his, when the president lost his peace, the devil starts talking. And when you don't have your peace. This goes for everybody. I'm just explaining yesterday. This goes for everybody. When you lose your peace of mind, here comes the devil, and he's talking over time. When you lose your peace of mind, the devil's going to be the next one talking because he doesn't want your peace of mind. He wants you to go into steal, kill, destroy. That's all he does. The father of lies to get you to do whatever it is he wants you to do. You're not doing what you want to do. You're doing what the devil wants you to do. You, do you really think we have no control. We are run by spirit, Holy Spirit or devil spirit. We are run by spirits, the Holy Spirit or the demonic spirits. Which spirit are you listening to? Is that simple? Is that simple? Two spirits, the, the spiritual warfare. What spirit are you listening to? The Holy Spirit or demonic spirit, the devil? That's the warfare right there. Which one are you listening to is always going on every day in your head. Every day in your head, both are talking. And who are you connected to? Connect the Holy Spirit, you hear him and rebuke him. You hear the Holy Spirit, you rebuke the devil. If there is no Holy Spirit, you can't rebuke the devil because you have no power. If you're not connected to God, you have no authority to stop the devil from talking in your ear to recreate chaos because there is no Holy Spirit in you because you're not connected. But when you're connected, the Holy Spirit says, rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, shut the devil up right now, resist the devil, and be me, boom, he's gone. But if there is no spirit in you, no love, no love of God, no power, no Holy Spirit, you can't rebuke something by yourself. You got to have the Holy Spirit who is connected to God to give us the spirit, the power to rebuke the devil. That's the authority he's talking about. I give you authority when you use my name in the name of Jesus. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But you got to be connected. You don't have that power without him. We don't have that power by ourselves. But when you're connected, when you're connected, Holy Spirit is giving us the power to rebuke and bind and cast out whatever it is in our life. Amen. Number five, number five, rebellion. Woo, woo. Don't give me, everybody give me a woo. Woo. Rebellion. That was rebellion in progress. Rebellion. The spirit of rebellion. 1 Samuel 15.23 1 Samuel 15.23 1 Samuel 15.23 1 Samuel 15.23 For rebellion Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft Rebellion is is as the sin of witchcraft. Right there, you might see, remember, remember, witchcraft is mind control. Demonic logic is a part of witchcraft because witchcraft is mind control. And right there it says, for rebellion is as the sin of divination. And divination is, divination is witchcraft. And insubordination, insubordination is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected your main king. Now, of course, this, this lesson, this word right here is being said to, to, said to Paul. Samuel's talking to Paul because of his rebellion and not listening to the Lord. But what we saw yesterday, 
was the manifestation the manifestation of this verse rebellion took over yesterday there was no control rebellion took over and as we said earlier god was nowhere in there because god is not a god of confusion so rebellion was also there number six number six hatred number six hatred this right now the world is in the, the nation especially our nation right now is a heavy state of division because of hatred hatred to change the reason we say every single day praying for the pray for god to wave his mighty hand over rebellion over division and over the spirit of racism the spirit of racism is not wanting to live together not to be one nation under god indivisible the hatred is not wanting to live under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all that's what the hatred is against we saw a few people a few people yesterday were waving the the Confederate flag. Some people had the Confederate flag. We saw a lot of other uh, all kind of flags, but there were several people who had Confederate flags. And Confederate flags mean there is no there is no unity between races. The Confederate flag means there is no unity. And so you see, that is also telling you what spirit was in the middle of yesterday: the hatred and racism because if you're waving a flag that was during the years of slavery and separatism of racism that was in there as well with the hatred now look at look at the verse uh john turn it turn to john oh that's first john wait let me, let me check this first john 315 that's john name first john i believe it is but what, what second john We'll make sure it's first down to John. First John 315. Let's see. First John 315. First John 315. First John 315. The number six, hatred. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that murder has that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him everyone who hates his brother is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him hatred see you can't kill somebody unless you hate them that's what the, the scripture is basically saying even if you don't even if you haven't killed somebody if you have hate if you have hate in your heart if you have hate in your heart, you have all you need to be able to kill someone. Because if there's no love in your heart, you don't care about your fellow man. You don't care about loving each other. If you live by hate, all you know is hate. There is no love for yourself, your fellow man, your family, anybody. So that's why the word says, if you hate your brother, it's like being a murderer. Because you can hate anybody. And do anything if there's hate in your heart. And you let the devil tell you what to do. In everything we're talking about right now. In everything we're talking about right now. The devil is telling you what to do. Because demonic logic is making everything we're talking about make sense. Demonic logic is making everything we're talking about make sense. It's okay to do it. It's okay to rebel. It's okay. Number seven, number seven, lawlessness. Number seven, lawlessness. I think we can, I think we can agree yesterday was definitely the definition of lawlessness. There was no law. There was no law and order. Total chaos, pandemonium, riot, insurrection, chaos. Lawlessness was yesterday. Lawlessness was in full force yesterday. Now, when I talk to kids, when I talk to kids uh, in school, lawlessness, lawlessness comes in many forms. Sometimes, hey Carol, sometimes we call lawlessness, lawlessness peer pressure. See, lawlessness comes in many forms. 
mob mentality. Mob mentality is lawlessness. Mass stupidity. I call peer pressure when, when a lot of kids get together and they do they do, do stupid things. Mass stupidity, lawlessness. Mob mentality, peer pressure, mass stupidity. For example, for, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Mass stupidity. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> this is, this is, whoa, help me. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing, but it's sad. I'm laughing, but it's sad. We are told right now to wear masks. Everybody's wearing masks. Everybody is supposed to wear a mask. Here these idiots are stealing and don't wear a mask. Mass stupidity. You, you're sitting down in, 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 in Pelosi's office looking at the camera with your feet on the desk and have no knowledge that they're going to arrest you faster than anybody else. This other guy is walking out the door looking at the camera, waving, carrying the podium with a presidential seal and looking at the camera. Mass stupidity. Cameras all over the place. Nobody's wearing a mask. Mass stupidity. Excuse me, when you steal, aren't you supposed to be hidden? Mass stupidity. Nobody was married. Nobody was wearing a mask as they committed the crime. Mass stupidity. Nobody was wearing a mask as they committed a felony. Help me, somebody. Help me, somebody. Mass stupidity. Shaking my shake, uh, give me a give me a shake, everybody. Give me a shake of my head. Give me a SMH shaking my head. Shaking my head. All I can do is shake my head. Master pity. Woo, woo. Shaking my head. Give me a shake of my head, y'all. Give me a shake of my head. Uh, S A S M H. <laughs> Look at Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, 18. Galatians chapter 5. See, this, <laughs> it was amazing. It, 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 it was amazing to me because I, I used to joke with people. I used to joke with people how, how in the old days before the pandemic, People who did crimes wore masks. Now, this, this is the irony. This is the irony. In the old days before the pandemic, when people did crimes, they covered their face. They covered their face. Now, everybody's supposed to be wearing a mask, and the people who are doing the crime are not wearing a mask. Excuse me? <laughs> what is the irony? Look at the irony of that. When you do a crime, you uncover your face? What? What? I'm shaking my head. I'm shaking my head for you. What? You do a felony and you uncover your face? Mass stupidity. Jeez, help me some. Help me somebody. Oh God. Mm. Okay, five, uh, Galatians. <laughs> Galatians five. Now I'm I'm going to do a uh, five eighteen. Five eighteen to twenty four. Five, chapter five, eighteen to twenty four. Amen, amen, Jonah. Yeah, I dare you to arrest me. See, see the reason they reason they thought they couldn't be arrested because the president said, "Let's do this. I'll be with you." That's the deception. The biggest deception was when the president said, "I'll march with you. I'll be with you." So they figured. Whatever they did, it's okay. Because the president said, let's do this. The president didn't say, go do this. The president said, go tear up the place. He said, he said, be strong, stand firm. But he didn't say, let's march down there and tear up the Capitol building. Tear up the Capitol building. He did not say that. See, their mind, their mindset was deceived. They thought if the president was going to do everything, then they, they would be okay. I can commit a crime because the president told me to do it. I can commit a crime because it's okay. He's marching with me. He wasn't marching with you. He's watching on television. 
And now everybody's going to prison who went in there because your face is your face is on camera because you took the mask off to do a felony. Whew. All right, look at uh, eighteen. Galatians, Galatians five, eighteen twenty four. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity. Sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbur outbursts of anger, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, those who practice these things, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom. Oh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at that. Look at look at verse 21. Those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Help me somebody. Look when you don't know. When you don't know, you don't know. When you don't know, you don't know. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But now, now, those of us, those of us who are seeking the will of God, look at verse 22 and 23. We should be doing this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, joy, kindness, love, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. And verse 24, now those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with all its passion and desires. See, this, this again is why it's so important. If you have no God, there is nothing in you that can help you hold your peace. Amen. Number eight, very simple. Number eight, very simple. Steal, kill, destroy. Number eight. Steal, kill, destroy. John 10, 10. S number eight. Steal, kill, destroy. John 10, 10. The devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. The devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I come that you may have life. And have it more abundantly. Those who don't have God, the devil came and did he, he did his due. Those who do not have God steal, kill, destroy. We saw it. Even those who didn't agree with the election, when you got God in your life, even if you're upset about the election, when you got God in you, you peacefully are upset. You don't you don't go and attack the, the White House or the, the Capitol building. You don't go insurrection. You don't go into chaos and violence. When you got God in you, you're upset and you just you disagree. But you don't go into steal, kill, destroy. Because if you don't have God, that's exactly what you do. Because God is peace and the world is violence. God is peace and the world is violence. Amen. Number nine, manipulation. Number nine, manipulation. Number nine, manipulation. Now, the reason I make manipulation number nine is because it includes everything. Everything we just did to get people to do what you want to do. Manipulation is doing everything we just said to get people to do whatever you want them to do. Say what you want to say. Make them hear what they want to hear. Deceive them, trick them, lie to them. Manipulation is using everything we just talked about to get people to do what you want them to do. Not they, they have no idea. They have no idea what you want them to do. They're just listening to you. But deception and lying and the tickling the ears, all that's a part of manip manipulation because I'm trying to get you to do what I want you to do, not what you want to do. I'm trying to make you think. What I want you to do is what you want to do. And if you listen to my smooth speech, 
you want to do what I want to do because I just convinced you. I'm convinced you to do what I want you to do. Not you. You're just listening. You're just listening. But when I speak to you that way, when I speak to you that way, you say, you say, what? You say, what? <laughs> when I speak to you that way, you keep on saying, and you don't know it. You don't understand it. That's why you say it. That's why manipulation is so dangerous. The Jezebel spirit, the Jezebel spirit, all about power and manipulation. Jezebel herself was all about power and manipulation. And that's what the, that's what the Jezebel, she was a woman with power and manipulation. But the Jezebel spirit can hit men or women. It's the spirit of power and control. The spirit of power and control to make people do what you want them to do. The spirit of manipulation, the Jezebel spirit, is in both men and women about power and control to control people to what you want them to do. And that's why manipulation is so dangerous. Because many people don't even understand they're doing something because you want them to do it. You trick them into doing it. You tickle their ears. Your smooth speech. You deceived them. And they did what you wanted to do. You, they did what you wanted them to do because you deceived them. Manipulation. And that was also why yesterday happened. Amen. And uh, just write down, we cover this Tuesday. The verses for manipulation is Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Genesis 3, 1 through 5. And the basic example of manipulation is the serpent talking to Eve. When Eve said Eve knew she was not supposed to take a bite of the forbidden, forbidden fruit, and the devil said, the serpent said, no, you're not going to die. It's okay. If you take a bite of that fruit, you'll know, you'll be like God. You'll know all about evil. You'll know all about good. And the devil wants her to bite that apple. So he's, he's manip manipulating, tickling her speech. He's tickling her ears. He's making her feel good because he said, it's okay. It's okay to bite that fruit. You're not going to die. No, you're not going to die. It's okay. And that's why manipulation is so dangerous. And last one. Last one, fear. Last one, the spirit of fear. And we know all about fear. We know all about fear. Number, number 10, fear. For God did not create a spirit of fear, but love, power, sound mind. Now, fear is everybody who does not want change. People are fearing living together in peace because all they know is hatred. If all you know is hatred, you fear living together with other people, living together as other races because all you know is fear. All you grew, you grew up with fear. You live by fear. You're taught fear. When all you know is fear and hatred, you, you fear the other races because hate and fear work together here. You hate other people because you fear they'll be equal. That, and that doesn't sound right. I know that, that doesn't sound right. But if we come together, the reason this country has, the reason this country has like Cinco de Mayo, we have all the different days, each Black History Month, each race has a day to allow us to learn about each other so we can live together, multicultural. That's what we should, we should seek to live together in all the races. But when you fear because of hatred, you fear every other race because you fear coming together and living together, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Not one, liberty and justice for all. They fear that. That fear is at the base. That fear right there is at the base of racist fear. That fear of coming together and living together as one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That is the fear the people who hate live by. And that's where I close. Nobody, nobody on this earth can change the heart of men. But God can. God is the only one who can change a heart of hate to a heart of love. And that's why we pray.
The reason we pray and we add every, we say it every day in fasting and praying, we pray for the Lord to uproot the grip of racism, to uproot it, the hatred, to uproot it in the nation and the world. It's been exposed this past year. It truly got exposed. So many people were acting like they weren't racist. And when last year came out, last year exposed a lot of people who people thought were not we're not living in fear. No, uh, no, Alan. Fear is not sin. No, the the word just says uh, he. The word tells us God did not create a spirit of fear. Fear is of the devil. So fear is the devil trying to steal your joy and your peace and your love in your heart. So the devil uses fear as a weapon. You're not. You're not in sin. Fear is not sin. Fear is the devil trying to keep you from the peace of God. So wh whenever you feel fear, you pray. Whenever you feel fear, talk to the Lord. You take it to him. Don't try to deal with it by yourself. We can't deal, we can't deal with it by ourselves. That's why we have to pray for the Lord to guide us through these things, to help us make it through it. That's why it's so important for us to make sure. That's why it's so important for us to make sure we stay connected to the Lord to hold our peace, to stay connected, to not let the world pull us in. Don't let the world's hate cause fear. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Stay in his secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91.1. Psalm 91.1. Hold your peace. Let the peace of God come over you. The word says, let the peace of God guard your heart, your mind. Philippians 4, 7. Philippians 4, 7. Let the peace of God guard your heart and mind. But you got to take it to the Lord in prayer. The only way to let the peace of God come into your life is take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. No fear. Take it to the Lord. Fear, overwhelm, stress, anxiety. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Like verse 6 says, let your request be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. That's verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. When you tell God, I'm struggling right now, Lord. I'm walking in fear, Lord. I need you, Lord. I fear my heart. Lord, give me peace of mind. Peace be still in Jesus' name. That You take it to the Lord in prayer. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety, negativity, infirmities, everything. Anything that's not like God, take it to the Lord in prayer to be able to walk in victory over it. And that's the key, Brother Allen, and everyone I want to share it with. There is no fear in God. So when you stay connected with God, he helps you overcome the fear. He helps you overcome the fear. Don't fear. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. Help me. And see, we're, we're not perfect. We're going to feel fear. We are going to feel fear. Don't get it twisted. We are going to feel fear. But don't give in to it. When you feel fear, go to prayer. You feel the fear in your heart, go to God. Don't, don't stress. No stress. Just rest. No stress. You feel the fear. Take it to the Lord. Lord, I need you right now. I'm really scared right now, Lord. I need your peace to overtake me. I need your love to overwhelm me. I need your anointing, Lord, to give me victory over this fear in my heart, Lord. Because I know you didn't create fear, but love, power, sound mind. I need you right now. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. That's what you do. That's what you do. When you feel fear in your heart, take it to the Lord. Don't sit there and fight it. We can't beat fear by ourselves. We cannot beat fear by yourself. You got to take it to the Lord. You got to take worry and stress, anxiety, all that stuff. Take it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Cast all your care on him for he cares for each one of us. And that's where I close. That's where I close. Because I'm so glad we got to share this message today because the Holy Spirit, when that stuff happened yesterday, the Holy Spirit said, you got to share with this. You got to share from the word. Share from the word what we saw yesterday was the devil manifested on earth trying to steal everybody's peace. Everybody's peace. Everybody was under attack yesterday. Not just not just the Capitol building. It wasn't about the Capitol building. It was about the devil trying to steal everybody's peace of mind. 
Those of us watching TV, you got fear. Watching other parts of the world, what's going on? Everybody was going, what's going on? What's going on? Everybody was attacked. Everybody's fear was under attack yesterday. And that's why we pray. That's why we stay connected. Hey, be inspired. That's why we never let go of God's unchanging hand. That's why we never let go of God's unchanging hand. The same yesterday, today, forevermore, to give us the peace we need. The peace be still. The peace beyond understanding. The peace we need to be able to survive in this world from day to day. Whew. All I can say is, whoo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, now, let's say, let's say a special prayer right now to cover this video. Now, I didn't talk about anybody. I didn't mention any names, but a lot of people are watching this channel. And sometimes, as OG ones, twos, and threes know, whenever I speak truth, sometimes all of a sudden, the video disappears. All of a sudden, I can't download it to make it a, a Bible study. So let's pray right now. Father God, Father God, right now, put a hedge of protection over this lesson right now, Lord. He put a hedge of protection, Lord, over this lesson so that everyone could hear and learn from this lesson right now, Lord. Let, your, let the blood of Jesus cover this video, the lesson, the server, the YouTube, everyone involved, Lord. Connect, protect this lesson. So those who want to hear may hear the truth and the truth will set them free as to what happened and what was going on spiritually yesterday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I learned from year one, we have to pray for protection over the truth because sometimes the truth is, people don't like, people don't like the truth. Sometimes people don't like the truth being shared. But when you understand when you understand what happened, there is no fear because I just showed you in the word. I showed you in the word. Everything that happened yesterday was in the word of God. And when you understand what's going on spiritually, you don't walk in fear because we know God is in control. When everything yesterday is in the Bible and you know that God is in control, there is no fear. Because we just explained what happened yesterday through the word of God. Not through politics, not through men. Forget about men. Forget about politics. We talk about what happened yesterday spiritually. We don't talk about politics. We talk about the spirit of God in politics. And what happened yesterday was not the spirit of God, but the demonic spirit of logic. Demonic logic took reign yesterday. And even still, even still, God is in control. Because everything ended the way it started. The meeting was successfully completed yesterday. So all that was for naught. All that chaos. Now, now before I close, before I close, I said this a few years ago. When you can't be the worst, excuse me, when you can't be the best at something, your next goal is to be the worst. Because only two people only two things are in history, the best and the worst. Nothing in between. The best and the worst is only thing history remembers. So if, and I, I saw this coming, I saw this day coming, I say, if you can't be the best, then your, ne your next goal is to be the worst because you got to be in history. You got to be in history and you can't be the best. So let me work on being the worst I can. So I'll still be in history because the goal is to be in history. The pride of life, the entire thing is the pride of life. If I can't be the best, I'm going to be the worst. I'm going to do something and go down in history for being the worst there is. And that's what yesterday was all about, to go down in history, to be the worst thing that ever has been done by a president. And now the goal was accomplished, is in history. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. Oh, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We thank you right now, Lord, for this lesson to help open our eyes, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, to be able to share this lesson with the fellowship, 
so we understand what's going on in this world spiritually, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation and the understanding so we understand exactly what is going on in this world from day to day according to your word, Lord. For we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. When we understand how the devil is working overtime in this world from day to day, trying to steal everybody's joy and peace. But Father God, we know, we know without a shadow of a doubt, you are in control of everything going on in the world. So there is no fear in us because there is no fear in you, Lord. We don't walk in fear because we know who we are in Christ. And we say thank you right now, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being an awesome wonder that you are, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close, before we close, I know someone's watching, someone's always watching who doesn't understand the praise and the worship and not maybe even the lesson. Someone right now is watching who's been doing nothing but crying the whole time. So please, for the next few minutes, as always, no typing as I do the closing prayer of salvation and the closing prayer. Anything typed during the closing prayers will be deleted, as always, out of respect to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening who's been crying the entire lesson, all the praise and the worship. You've been crying the whole time because your life right now is falling apart. Darkness, worry, stress, Fear is all over your life. You may even feel like giving up your life right now and not going on living. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel. And you have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you into this channel. He sees what's going on. He brought you here. You're not here by accident. God sees the pain and suffering you're going through in your personal life right now. You may be, you may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into a world of sin. And now your life is falling apart in darkness and worry and stress is all over you right now. But if you've been walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of, safe, the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So when you're walking in depression and darkness... Or you've been walking as a backslider. I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done. And the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins. And was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life. Or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart. And remove from me anything and everything that's not like you. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guides us, and also convicts us when you're not walking in God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Every day. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt. Every day, not just every Sunday, every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named the unnamed, seen and unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, 
out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into fellowship, unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life. Loose reconciliation, Lord, bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please give me his protection over all the marriages and families who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we were healed. We speak it every day, Lord. We confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus, every day, confess it, live it, breathe it, see it, expect it. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let, let your blessings, Lord, let your blessings of abundance, Lord. Blessings of abundance rain down on every fellowship member right now, especially during the hard times in this pandemic, Lord. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle right now they're praying for. And now we know, Lord, we know as a fellowship, every day we spend time, every day, visualize it, see it, see your miracle, believe it, receive it. And once you receive your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up could be a day and a manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace that you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by and bless without opening your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you, 24-7, 365, including leap year. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.